Recruit the best citizens to gain supremacy in medieval France. This is our review of Orléans. Orléans is a bag building game about achieving dominance by collecting different character tiles. And I think it's really the bag building mechanic that really stopped me from getting too much analysis paralysis. The first time we played this game, the person teaching it to us didn't do a great job, and I still had a lot of fun. That's how fun this game is. We'll tell you all about it after this quick how to play. The game is played over 18 rounds with seven phases happening each round. During the main phases, players will draw character tiles that will be used as workers to perform actions in later phases. Players choose action locations on their player boards and then place the matching character tiles to perform the actions. The actions will allow players to gain more character tiles, technology, city tiles, or move their merchant along the Orléans board. At the end of 18 rounds, the player with the most points from goods, money, trading stations, and citizen tiles wins. Before you go off traveling to medieval France, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. All your likes and subscribes really help our channel grow, so merci beaucoup. Like I hinted at in the intro, when we first played this game, it was at a game meetup and someone else was teaching. Normally, either I would learn the game or Lee would learn the game and then we would teach our group. So this was our first time having someone else teach us a game. And either they just didn't do a great job or it just wasn't a style that we were used to, but I feel like I didn't really grasp the mechanics as much as I should have when we were playing. As you start playing, you can learn them pretty quickly because it's not a tough play. However, I still really enjoyed it. Even though there was some catching up as I was learning the rules as we were playing, I still liked all the moving pieces. I liked everything that was going on. And I still had a lot of fun, even if I was a little frustrated at the beginning. And that's just how much fun this game is and how much I really enjoyed this game. If I were to judge this game by its cover, I wasn't really sure how I felt about it. Like the illustrations and everything just seemed like really old timey, like kind of muted colors and everything. So I was like, eh. Yeah, we'll see. And then when you lay it out, there's a lot going on. You have your player board, you got your bags, all these tiles. So it really does take a while to set up. But then when you finally start the game, like the mechanics in there, and I just, I don't know, I, I really enjoyed it. The main mechanic of this game is a bag building game. So you're gonna be collecting different character tiles that you're gonna put in the bag. You can get the character tiles by performing the different actions on your board to get more character tiles. But then on the beginning of each round, you're gonna reach in your bag, draw from the bag, and draw however many character tiles that you're allotted based on one of the spaces on the main board. And then you use those character tiles to perform actions on your player board. However, you can mitigate the different actions you can take by getting the different workers. You get to choose which character tiles you wanna go after. So you can choose your strategy. Do you want more character tiles so you have a better variety of character tiles that you're pulling out of the bag? Do you want fewer, but you wanna have more places where you can put them by getting city tiles? Do you wanna go after the technology and limit how many character tiles you need because the technology counts as a permanent character on that action space? So there's a lot of different strategies that you could take all while incorporating the bag building with the worker placement. I think it's just a brilliant combination of those two mechanics. I mean, with this game, there's so many things you can do. You can, you know, trade, you can try and build up your bag, you can do this. So, you know, once you draw those workers, now you're now you're limited now. You got like a little frame, like, okay, I can do all this. Now, oh wait, but now I have these guys, so I can only do this. And it kind of helps you focus more and not get too into the weeds of like, oh, well, what if this happens and this, and oh, and then I do that and slowly build this. So, you know, I'm kind of guilty of that whenever we play games of just free reign, like, you know, seven plus or 10 plus options. I'm just sitting there like, the main way you're gonna get points from this game are from building the trading stations, having the citizen tiles that you can earn, and then multiplying that by where you are on the development track. There's a lot of different paths you can do to get there. However, ultimately everyone is going after the trading stations, the citizen tiles, and moving up on the development track. So no matter what other path you're doing with your bag building, with the actions you're taking, still you're, everyone's gonna end up building some buildings in the city and then moving along on the development track. So when we were playing or when anyone plays, it's really that balance of, okay, do I like jump on the board and start putting up these trading stations soon because they're limited. You know, most of the spots, any, everyone can just only build one. And then once it's gone, it's gone. So if you wait too late in the game, then you know, you're pretty far behind. As much as I really enjoy this game, there are a few things that bring down the score for me. And it's two things. One is one mechanic that I'll get to in a second. And the other one is that because you have to go after the trading stations and you have to go after the development track, it kind of forces everyone to 
kind of choose a strategic option if you really want to get a high scoring game. When you really look at what's a good strategy in this game to get a high score, you really need to focus on a few things. And I don't really like when games kind of steer you in a direction. I read, I like the openness of it. That's what I really liked about this game. But when you start playing it enough, you're like, oh wait, I got to do this and this first. So that kind of steers my strategy. And I'm always going to start off doing this. I'm going to start off doing this. And I'm going to start off doing this. And it's not really until round five, six or seven when I can really kind of open up a little bit and not do what everyone else is doing at that point. And the mechanic that I don't really like in this game is when you run out of the character tiles from the different actions that you can take on the different tracks here, you can't go to that space anymore. So if you run out of the scholars at the university and you can't improve your development track anymore, you're really kind of screwed as far as getting a high score. Because remember, as I was saying earlier, you need that multiplier. So if you don't do that first and it gets filled up and then you can't get any more of those tiles, then you can't go to that space anymore. Yes, there are are different events that happen that people could draw a character tile and end up putting it back on the university, but that's luck of the draw. And you know I'm not a big fan of luck of the draw mechanics in games. So I wish there was a better way that they could come up. Like you should still be able to go to the action space. You just don't get the character tile to add to your bag so that other people do have an ability to go to the development track because when it's limited like that, that forces you to do that strategy of, well, I gotta make sure I get on that development track. So those two kind of things bring it back once you start playing it enough to realize, all right, you gotta do these things first. On one hand, I like that it's not like, oh, it's not infinite tiles. And then they did try and make a mechanic to let you put the tiles back. But yeah, like you said, it's kind of luck of the draw. If you have a whole bag full of them, what are the odds you're gonna draw that one that the other player might need or something. So yeah, I'm with you on that, especially for the development track, which is very important in the game to get your multipliers. Another thing I really like about the game is how they address when your your deck or your bag just gets too big and you gotta like get rid of stuff. Yeah, there are other games that, oh, you know, you can throw away this card, but you have to like draw something. This one is like, you can gain achievements or money when you turn in some workers that you know you'll never use again. So it's like, okay, yeah, I'll put it there, I'm fine. That way you'll have better characters in here and then, you know, you, you won't end up drawing them and I don't know, kind of helps you strategize a little bit more that you know you have better pieces coming and not like the ones you're not really gonna use anymore. Overall, it looks like a lot, and it is a lot. However, it's also a lot of fun. The pieces, the mechanics, the bag building, you know, I think it's really great. So I'm gonna give this game a eight. Overall, there's a lot I love about this game. It was a lot of fun when we first played it, even though we weren't taught it very well, and we still enjoy it now. Even though I know there's a couple mechanics that kind of bug me, and there's a couple things that it does that still kind of bug me, it still ranks pretty high up there. I really enjoyed this game, so overall, I'm gonna give it an eight. And that was our review of Orléans. What'd you think? Are you ready to dominate France? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're enjoying our content, please like this video, subscribe to our channel. Until next time, I'm Lee. And I'm Kenny. I go party like a board gamer.